Okay, so there is a lot of misinformation going around about calcium and vitamin D. And specifically, especially when it comes to mainstream medical advice. Now the mainstream medical community knows that calcium plays an extremely important role in everything from kidney disease to heart disease and especially strong bones. They place significant importance on calcium's correlation with strong bones. Okay. For the record, obviously poor absorption of calcium can cause kidney stones and hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, and buildup of calcium deposits in arteries which causes arterial plaques uh, or blockages in the arteries more specifically. Now, there's a huge emphasis on consuming more calcium for strong bones. And of course, this has become almost cliche because you hear this all the time with milk commercials. But the fact of the matter is, the solution to building healthy bones is not to consume more calcium, but rather learning how calcium is absorbed and metabolized in the body and increasing the efficiency of absorption and met metabolism of calcium in its supporting minerals. What's, a, what's very interesting, and I recommend everyone look this up, is that higher intakes of calcium, or more specifically higher intakes of high calcium foods such as dairy products, especially dairy, uh, milk, cheese, etc., is actually correlated, strongly correlated, with greater hip fractures and uh, fragility of bones, breaking of bones and whatnot. Also, atherosclerosis is, uh, has been shown to be higher in populations who consume more dairy products. Okay, so taking in all this uh, calcium through dairy products, like the dairy industry is constantly preaching about, may not be the wisest method of action for optimizing calcium intake. And this is often t oftentimes one of the largest excuses for people uh, who hear the advice, well, you should, maybe you should try stopping dairy for two weeks or so um, for something like an elimination diet to see if they have an uh, intolerance or an allergy to it. And most people, they're always like, well, but where am I going to get my calcium from, which is completely retarded. Because, first of all, if you really, really, really feel like you need more calcium, um, first of all, dairy products, the calcium found in dairy is not even natural calcium. It's actually been added uh, from calcium supplementation. Uh, same thing goes for a lot of the other vitamins that are found in dairy products. They're actually added, especially things like vitamin D, okay, calcium, and... Uh, uh, vitamin A even is now added to dairy products. I can guarantee you conventionally raised dairy is not uh, natural, does not have naturally occurring vitamin A. Uh, oftentimes in some butter products um, they actually add beta carotene or some other art or some other uh, yellow coloring to make the butter or whatever dairy product more yellow. And beta carotene is actually a precursor to active vitamin A. Okay, and it may color the food yellow, but it's no substitute for naturally occurring vitamin A. But what I'm trying to say is, there's not even any real calcium in the milk uh, that's naturally occurring. It's usually a supplement that is added to the dairy product. So if the calcium in dairy products is supplemental supplemental or supplementally added, then why the fuck don't you just buy yourself a calcium supplement instead of consuming dairy? It's actually a uh, it's actually the same thing, it's just more cost effective. Um, but this video is about the absorption of calcium. It's not an anti dairy video and of course I consume high quality raw grass fed organic cheeses myself sometimes sour cream and uh, so it's not like I'm against dairy products but what I'm trying to get across is um, number one uh, there's more spinach and or there's more calcium and things like spinach things like cocoa powder cacao um, and
bone broth or bones and bone marrow, okay? So, I mean, you'd be better off consuming sardines with the bones or salmon with the bones or uh, boiling, uh, slow cooking bones for 48 hours and consuming the bones uh, or even just eating eggshells, uh, believe it or not, if you consume a responsibly sourced uh, um, eggs, uh, pasture-raised healthy eggs, and you, you know, scrub it to uh, eliminate any chance of bacteria, or you just cook it with the eggs, um, there's a lot of calcium in the eggshell, okay? There's a lot of calcium in the bones of the animals, and you can eat bones. Bones are very easily digestible contrary to what a lot of people assume, okay? Assumptions does not make something true. So if you feel like you need fucking calcium, just eat eggshells, just eat bones, just eat spinach, okay? But what I'm trying to say is that it's not more calcium that you need, it's eliminating uh, antagonist minerals. Uh, for example, milk is also very high in phosphorus, which uh, from, if I remember correctly, phosphorus is actually uh, leaches calcium as an antagonist of calcium, but what's most important is just understanding that populations who consume, you know, what everyone thinks is the best source of calcium, the more they consume, uh, the more symptoms of calcium deficiency they seem to have. Uh, so to optimize your calcium absor absorption and uh, get a, uh, and metabolize calcium, put calcium where it needs to go, your bones and uh, other areas, alkaline areas of your body, you need to optimize your magnesium intake, your vitamin K2, and your vitamin D. Okay? There's other cofactors involved, but these are the three main ones. Okay? I believe uh, for every 1,000 IUs of vitamin D, you need 100 uh, micrograms, I believe, of vitamin K2. Okay? And so, you need to learn about vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is fat soluble and it's very different from vitamin K1. Okay? Vitamin K1 has to do with blood clotting and many other mechanisms, but it's most known for blood clotting. And uh, vitamin K2 has everything to do with uh, relaxing the cardiovascular system and uh, managing vitamin D. And of course, if you know anything about vitamin D, vitamin D is responsible for managing the, bal the balance of calcium and magnesium. So all of these vitamins or minerals need to be in proper balance, okay? So as a rule of thumb, 5,000 IUs of supplemental vitamin D3 along with at least four to 600 milligrams of highly bio uh, bioavailable Vit uh, magnesium, okay? And you need either magnesium citrate or some kind of chelated magnesium, some kind of uh, amino acid bound magnesium. Uh, magnesium glycerate or glycinate, that's very awesome for helping you relax. Or magnesium torate, okay? The magnesium torate or magnesium glycin glycinate, these are the two that can really help you relax and uh, have nothing but positive effects, help put you in a good mood, these are great. Uh, but if anything, a pure magnesium citrate is also great. Okay, I have a video on this, this is actually my most popular video at this time of all time, is uh, my video I did on magnesium citrate way back in like 2013, or yeah, 2013. Um, but you need magnesium and you need a lot of it, 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium minimum. The reason being, well first of all, magnesium is something that is very depleted in our soils, okay? Even the foods that people claim are so high in magnesium probably don't even have that much magnesium in it anymore, okay? Just because you see uh, data, numbers, and statistics on a website that say, oh, the highest form, the highest foods in, vita in magnesium, just because they list that shit doesn't necessarily mean that every time you eat that food it's going to have any magnesium in it at all. Okay, because just because a website says 40 milligrams of magnesium per, per pound of food doesn't mean that that's what the farmers have in the soil. Okay, because 
the soil is going to vary depending on what the farmers put in it. And uh, conventionally raised food is drastically deficient in vitamins. It's better to go for organic, local if, if necessary. And uh, if you even have a local farmer's market, you can ask the farmers about the minerals they put in the soil. And uh, you have a better idea of what minerals you're actually getting. But since uh, magnesium and uh, all these minerals are so deficient in our soil, you can't rely on whole foods anymore to get these minerals. And since these are so important, it makes fucking absolute perfect sense to just spend like drop $10 on a high quality supplement that contains all of these things. And at my own local uh, natural grocer's store, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other health food stores that have these supplements, but maybe not the best prices. I actually found for $10 a supplement that contains uh, 1,000 IUs of vitamin D, 100 uh, micrograms or milligrams of vitamin K2. Um, basically, are, you know the, uh, the perfect ratio, 1,000 of vitamin D and then 100 of vitamin K2. And then it has um, something like 600 milligrams of calcium and like 600 milligrams of magnesium, something like that. That's the perfect ratio, okay? But it's better not to even supplement with calcium. You don't need to. You, most people get way more calcium than they need. But what we need is magnesium, vitamin K2, and vitamin D. Okay? So I recommend a supplement for that. Look for vitamin K2. Uh, there's two different types. Uh, I believe MK4 and MK7. Uh, but don't take my word for that. Uh, but there are two different types of vitamin K2. It's best to supplement with both forms. But one form is better than none. And uh, definitely supplement with vitamin D, even if you get out in the sun, even if you eat a lot of eggs and other food sources of vitamin D. Get out in the sun, but also take vitamin D. And take vitamin K2, and take magnesium. A, a high quality source, don't settle for mag magnesium oxide, okay? Or carbonate. Don't settle for magnesium carbonate. And definitely don't buy calcium carbonate, okay? If you do use calcium, a calcium citrate is better but um, you don't need a calcium supplement. So what are the symptoms of a calcium malabsorption? Well, one thing that I have seen is a cascade of symptoms that doctors completely don't give two shits about, it seems like, um, and they just prescribe medication after medication for like five different uh, diagnoses that are all caused by calcium malabsorption in, in the same patient, okay? There is one person uh, that I talked to who has gout, which is a calcium malabsorption. It's calcium crystals that are deposited in the bone and in the joints, and uh, they lead to arthritis. And he also had high blood pressure, which can also be caused by calcium malabsorption. You have calcium buildup in the blood or um, just not a magnesium deficiency you're gonna fucking have high blood pressure. So high blood pressure and gout. And then um, sleep disturbances, which, you know, like he has trouble getting to sleep. I mean, obviously, if you don't have enough magnesium and you have poor, metabolize it, poor metabolism of calcium, uh, your body's going to be in a state of fight or flight. And it's gonna be very challenging for you to go to sleep at night because calcium and magnesium uh, are heavily responsible in the cells uh, for balancing energy, metabolism, relaxation uh, or contraction or activity of the muscles in the brain as well, in the nervous system. Okay, magnesium helps to calm the nervous system in the muscles. And uh, if, you're, if you have a malabsorption or magnesium deficiency, then of course you're gonna have high blood pressure, of course you're gonna be anxious, of course you're gonna have deposits of calcium in your bone, in your kidney, in your arteries uh, because you don't have the cofactors and vitamins that are required to put that calcium where it's supposed to go. Okay, Very, very important and uh, it all makes sense if you start to research this on your own. And uh, I have no fucking clue why there are still doctors who completely miss this. Okay, If, if you have a patient who has gout which is calcium crystals building up in the bones and other areas are not supposed to be. Um, and then they also have high blood pressure. Clearly there's a mineral imbalance of some kind that's, that has something to do with calcium. 
crazy to me how the fuck people can't, you know, doctors don't know this. And then if you just do a little bit of research, you can put connect the dots and understand this. But anyway, um, yeah, this is just uh, some information and observations on calcium. Uh, and so go ahead, try it for yourself, do your own research. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below um, what you think about this or any of your experiences. And um, let me know if you have any questions or comments or any ideas for future videos. And I'll talk to you soon.